Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. How are you doing? Good. Uh, to answer the question, I think I hear some people whispering about, no, I did not sleep in my community fest outfit. <laughs> I'll explain that in a little bit. But it was community fest yesterday, and I just want to give such a big thank you to the, the community of Messiah Lutheran Church for putting this on, whether you were here in person or not, you, you've been hearing about it, you've been praying about it, you've been sharing it with others. Uh, I'm going to talk about it more in my sermon, but it, it rained, it threw some things off, but the event, I think, was everything we wanted it to be. I wish it could have done more, but it was everything we wanted it to be, and uh, to everybody who gave so much time and energy and effort and prayer to being here, to welcoming our guests, to making it good for the organizations that were here, uh, to just all the work and sweat that went into this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it just, you could see the Holy Spirit doing some stuff yesterday. And uh, I look forward to today and the weeks to come, just continuing to ask God, uh, what is it that God was up to here? What are we learning from this? What are we going to do with this now in the future? What is God going to do with this through us now in the future? I'm very excited to, to see what happens next. So thank you. What? I will. Just, yeah, go ahead and start handing them out. I got one more thing on Community Fest. It's very, you know, just, let's, let's just throw, Roger's distributing envelopes to the pews. We're going to put two per pew for now. I'll explain them. Just put them on the end of the pew somewhere and we can distribute. Uh, one other thing from Community Fest, very important. One of our groups, uh, Gentiva Hospice, had a raffle. And they asked me to announce the winner of the raffle and the correct guess. It was a water bottle full of lifesavers, like some kind of mint lifesaver, the white ones. And so she said, you know, my kids have been pestering me, like, what was the answer? I'm like, no, I told her I'd wait. So here's the answer. The winning number was 57. 57. And the person who got it with a spot-on guess was not even a member of our congregation. Her name was Beth Denton. I don't know, but they're going to reach out and tell her. But if you were wondering who won that raffle, it was Beth Denton with a, an exact guess of 57. Um, like I said, I'm going to talk more about Community Fest during my sermon in a little bit. And I'll also explain this look during the sermon, too. Uh, but also just realize that our gospel reading is about a guy who showed up not wearing his robe. So, uh, What Roger's handing out. So next summer in July, is it's once every three years, I think, the ELCA, the denomination we're a part of, puts on the National Youth Gathering. I know Messiah has sent groups to these before. It's back in New Orleans this year, and uh, the parents of the youth who are in the age range that can go have been talking. We want to make this happen. So uh, more details to come, lots more details, but for now, just to get the ball rolling, what are going into the pews are called pledge a mile envelopes, and what you're going to see, hopefully in the next week, is we're going to have some tape, masking tape, it won't hurt anything, around the perimeter of the room. And if we did our math right, each half inch will equal a mile, and it'll be the distance from here to New Orleans, uh, and we're going to do a pledge a mile. So if you want to put some donations in there towards National Youth Gathering, that would be wonderful. We'd be very appreciative, and we will update how far along the route we've gotten each week as the donations come in uh, with a little display of whatever town or intersection we made it to with that many miles down the road. All right, so we'll, we'll see our progress as we go around. Uh, so if you need more envelopes, we've got a whole box full, but we're just starting with two per pew, and we can stretch this one out. Uh, what else is going on? It's not like the, the church stopped moving now that Community Fest is done. There's a lot more coming up. Uh, next Sunday, there's a lot going on. First off, we're going to welcome some new members during worship. Uh, it's not like they're brand new off the street. They've been attending for a while, but we'll make it official. Uh, there's also, we've got somebody from Thrivent coming. Her name is Anna Strauss, where is it? Anna Strauss Watts. Uh, there's a program called Thrivent Money Canvas where you can uh, meet with a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a financial coach to help you see where your money is going, build healthier financial habits, find motivation to stick with them. It's free. 
Um, she's not the coach. She's not doing that, but she'll give a presentation on it after worship. We're going to set up a projector and a screen down in the fellowship hall. Um, right after worship, uh, on the 29th of October, we're having Reformation Day, sure, but also it's Confirmation Day. We've got a group of nine amazing uh, young folks who have stuck with trying to figure out how to do confirmation when we have a pastoral transition, a pandemic, uh, trying to do things online over texts. Um, they've stuck with it. Uh, four different school districts try scheduling things with that. So, but we made it through, and uh, on October 29th, we're going to affirm their baptism, confirm them uh, in the faith. And so next Sunday, right after service, we're going to have a little rehearsal in here for that while the money canvas thing is getting set up in the fellowship hall. And then I'm going to stay in here and do youth group with the teens, and then everybody else can go check out the money canvas thing. So moving parts, but it'll all fit together next Sunday, the 22nd. And then again, the 29th, please come. Be ready to, to just love on these folks and, and congratulate them for uh, making this milestone, <laughs> this new beginning in their life of faith. Uh, our Bible study continued this Sunday. We're going to do one more session next week on the book of Acts, uh, finding how the New Testament references the Old Testament. And then uh, by a pretty decent consensus, we're going to start a book study the following week on the 29th uh, on a book called Stars Beneath Us. It's about the book of Job, and it's written by somebody who is both an ordained minister and an astrophysicist, an astronomer. So it's an interesting book. It helps... Uh, kind of deal with the book of Job, or at least helps you use the book of Job to deal with other things. So uh, we'll be sending out uh, uh, an email this week with information about where to find that book. Okay, that's that. And then I want to make sure you're also aware that in three Sundays from now, uh, I think it's November 5th, it is All Saints Sunday. And traditionally we will have a wreath up front that you can bring single flowers for loved ones that you want to honor and remember, we'll put those in the wreath. We'll have some too, but if you'd like to bring your own, especially if it's a particular type of flower that was meaningful, please bring those. And we'll also have uh, candles across the front of the altar representing those who have died, especially in the last year, and uh, those who've been baptized in the last year. The great communion of saints from baptism into the next life. So uh, if you want to make sure that's on your radars, so if you wanted to bring a flower, you can. That might be it. Is there anything else that isn't me talking? All right. Then let us continue our time of worship together in the front of your bulletins with confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our 
gathering song should be printed in your bulletins. It's not in our hymnal, but from what I understand, we have sung it here in the past. It's called Give Thanks. Continue in the front of our hymnals on page 165. It was pointed out to me that it uh, would not hurt to give a reminder that the big numbers in the hymnal are the hymns. That's most of the hymnal. But in the front of the hymnal, if I ever say that or if it just says page in your bulletin, those are the little numbers on the bottom of the page in the front. It goes up into the 200s, I think. So if that has ever caused confusion, my apologies. Sometimes you do something for so long, you just kind of assume everybody knows what you're talking about. Uh, but page 165, little number in the front of your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Let us pray together. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Christ Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Um, we wanted to hand out Bibles to folks way back on Rally Day, but due to a combination of shipping delays and needing somebody with much better penmanship than I to write in some of those Bibles, uh, it took a little bit, but we have them now and they're ready to hand out. I know not a lot of the folks are here today because it's the fall and there's tournaments and all sorts of things, but I'm going to read you the names of our, confirma our new confirmation student who's getting a Bible. And then we kind of had some Bibles in the classroom, but we said, you know what, let's just give every kid a Bible. So from third grade up to confirmation, if you haven't gotten one before, we'll be giving one out too. So here's the names. It's Jeanette Gooch, uh, Bion Reagan, Wesley Williams. Is Wesley here? Like, hey, come on up. Uh, Alan Anderson, come on up. Uh, Josie Reagan, Kate Radke, and Rosalind Gooch. So you guys come on up. I will grab the Bibles that we have, and we will just do the rest when they're here. Right. Oh, actually, I need parents to come up, too. <laughs> come on up. Right. I'll be your parent. Okay. Right. You come over here. Right. Stand with your folks. And here's what I'm going to do, because this is how it works. When we, get, when we do a baptism, your parents make a promise to place the Holy Scriptures in your hand, and the church is here. Oh, we got more. Come on up. You're just in time. All right. Come on up. That is like perfect timing. I'm about to give, uh, I'm about to give your daughter's Bibles. Come on up. Ruth, Ruth, can you come up too? Yes. Okay, cool. Right, come on up. I'm going to give you guys your Bibles. Brand new. All right. Um, so we make, uh, at baptism, the parents say we promise to place scriptures in their hands. And the church's job is to support the families as they support their kids. And then we all work together, right? So it's not just, you know, something that we teach you guys here and then uh, you go home and forget about it. It's all working together. So I'm going to put the Bibles into the hands of the parents, and then the parents, when I say, will put the Bibles into the hands of their kids. Like that. Like that. Um, will, can you be a holder so that she can just pass them out one at a time? There we go. I got this one. All right. When you were baptized, your parents made promises to God on your behalf. Uh, these promises and responsibilities are to have you live among God's faithful people, okay? Uh, to bring you to the word of God and the Lord's Supper, check, okay? To teach you the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in your hands the Holy Scripture, to nurture you in faith and prayer, so that, there's always a so that with God, you may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through words and deeds, care for others in the world God made and work for justice and peace. So today, I'm going to help your parents, and I'm one of them, to live out that one promise, to place the, the, in your hands the Holy Scripture. So, uh, as I say, I'm going to have a repeat after me. I'll say it, and then the parents say it, and then I'll have one for the kids too. So during the first one, hand them the Bibles. All right. Okay, repeat after me. Receive this Bible. Receive this Bible. And kids, you say, I receive this Bible. Okay, that's how it's going to work. You get it? All right. So parents, hear God's word with us. Hear God's word with us. I'll hear God's word with you. Kids? Okay, we'll work out the kinks. All right. Parents, learn and tell its stories. Learn and tell its stories. Kids, I'll learn and tell its stories. There you go. All right. Parents, discover its mysteries. Discover its mysteries. I'll discover. Discover 
It's mysteries. All right. Uh, wrestle with the tough parts. Wrestle with the tough parts. I'll wrestle the tough parts. Okay. There's just two more. We're almost done. Honor its commandments. Honor its commandments. I'll honor its commandments. There you go. Last one. I, this did not work like I thought it would. Uh, <laughs> rejoice in its good news. Rejoice in its good news. I'll rejoice in its good news. May God's life-giving word inspire you and make you wise. May you be blessed by the word of God today and always. Now, I want you to do a couple of things. I want you to put your names in these. There wasn't a spot to be like this Bible is presented to. But I want you to make it your own. So put your name in the front, decorate it. I want you to underline things, highlight things, circle things. I want you to make this Bible your own, and I'll repeat the guarantee. If you use this Bible so much that it literally falls apart, I will personally buy you a new one. Okay? So go ahead and head back to your spots. And during the reading, that's why I'm doing this now, I want you to actually follow along in your Bible instead of in the bulletin. Have your parents help you find the things and flip to that page and follow along in the Bible for the readings, all right? All right, you can head back to your seats. And somewhere, we have children's activity pages for you. So if you want one of those during the sermon, you can go talk to Mr. Darren and he'll hook you up. All right, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's you. The first lesson is from Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. After a hymn of praise acknowledging God as a shelter for the poor, the prophet portrays a wonderful victory banquet at which death, which in ancient Canaan was depicted as a monster swallowing up everyone, will be swallowed up forever. The prophet urges celebration of this victory of salvation. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you, I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure, for you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin, the palace of aliens is a city no more, it will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you, cities of ruthless nations will fear you, for you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy and their distress a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Though writing from prison and facing an uncertain future, Paul calls on the Philippians to rejoice and give thanks to God, no matter what the circumstance. God's peace is with us and binds together our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, especially when things around us do not seem peaceful. A reading from Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Iodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I also ask you, my loyal companion, Help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Stand as we sing the gospel acclamation on page 171. gospel today comes from the 22nd chapter of Matthew. Jesus tells a parable indicating that the blessings of God's kingdom are available to all, but the invitation is not to be taken lightly. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Uh, Thinking about a wedding banquet got me to thinking about um, my own wedding reception. Uh, In fact, we just had a picture album out the other day. We were relatives getting married, so we were talking about bridesmaids' dresses. It doesn't matter. Um, (laughs) We showed a picture. Uh, But on a day like that, and if you've been to a wedding, if you've been in a wedding, participated, gotten married, um, you know that when people start telling those stories, it's always a mixture of the things that went really well and then the things that really didn't go well. Uh, For Liz and myself, um, some of the things that maybe didn't go the way we wanted, one thing was her mom insisted that we use a unity candle. I have nothing personal against Unity Candles. We didn't necessarily want to use one, but she insisted. She'd already purchased it. It happened to be pink and swirly. Um, We got married over Thanksgiving weekend, and when we tasted our cake that we had gone and found and picked out, it became clear to us that it was baked probably Wednesday frozen over Thursday, Friday, Thanksgiving, and then thawed out Saturday for our wedding. Didn't taste quite the way we remembered when we tried it the first time. Uh, What else did we have? We had our our bulletins. I went to pick them up uh, Saturday morning, and the printer had really messed them up. They were like smudged and like half dark. You couldn't read them. That was the whole thing, but we got it to work. Um, 
And then, of course, it was the weather. Uh, we were getting married over Thanksgiving weekend in Dubuque, Iowa. There was snow on the ground in the morning and some light flurries, and then it switched over to kind of a slushy rain. By the time of the ceremony, the sun was out, and it was beautiful, but it did make us a little nervous. And then uh, in between the wedding and like the ceremony and the reception, we did pictures, right? Well, our photographer, we like, well, he did our class pictures. We, he knows how to do this. It took forever. He kept making us, he kept making me hold Liz's elbow. I don't know why, like framing or something. It just, it was weird. <laughs> but those stories, even though they didn't go the way they were supposed to, they become something to smile about. They become part of the overall story as we tell it. And at the time it was stressful, but now we just kind of smile and laugh. Can you believe it? And partly that's because in the grand scheme of things, the day was a, was a success. We got married. We're going on 19 years now. Um, our friends and family made the trip, some of them from multiple states away, to celebrate with us. That was amazing. Uh, we were in seminary at the time, and we were full-on seminarian, aspiring to be pastor nerds, and we had a whole-on worship service with a wedding in the middle of it, which was the nerdy part, but the cool part, at least to us, was that our first act as a married couple was to serve communion to the guests. We had the bread and served it. That was cool. Um, we had this fantastic reception that when it ended, we left, and apparently the reception party kept going. They went back to the hotels, and weird combinations of people from different parts of our life kept on partying. <laughs> you know, and mainly, though, we exchanged our vows and rings, and we got hitched. Part of the vows, one of the phrases in our vows was, in all the circumstances of our life together, right? to be loyal to you, share our lives, things like that. But in all circumstances, and we'll still look at each other sometimes when life gets a little hairy and we'll be like, in all circumstances, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes, in all, you know. You get it. <laughs> so I want to talk today about start today by talking about perspective. If I had a different perspective, all I would remember from that wedding day, from that weekend, was just the negatives. Can you believe, you know, 20 years later, still talking about the things that, you know, the, the wedding cake that had been frozen and thawed. <coughs> and I want to talk about perspective a la Philippians, our reading today from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always, in all circumstances. Rejoicing always doesn't mean blindly rejoicing. It doesn't mean just plugging your ears and saying, la la la, everything's great, being a Pollyanna, sickly sweet. It's not the kind of rejoicing that just says, well, everything happens for a reason, yay. It's, it's more like, rather, God is at work through every. I might be in the valley of the shadow of death right now, but I trust that God will lead me through to the other side and that maybe only in hindsight I can see how the Holy Spirit was in the midst of it, that God was at work turning it towards something better. There's times when you look around the world, we were talking about in our class today the, the ongoing atrocities between Hamas and Gaza and Israel and both sides indiscriminately hurting one another. I cannot see any possible way right now that that's happening for a reason, that something good will come out of it, but I do trust that eventually God will work even that situation towards something better. So when I say rejoice in the Lord always, when Paul says that, when I say in all circumstances, I don't mean to rejoice over things that you shouldn't rejoice over. 
but you rejoice that the Lord is with you in the midst of it and will turn things and work through things in the end. I will rely fully on God. I will rejoice with prayer and thanksgiving. I will put my entire trust in God, receiving the peace that surpasses all understanding, that helps us to see God at work in everything, in all circumstances, even the things that aren't going according to plan. So now, that being said, let's talk about Community Fest yesterday. Um, thinking of parties, thinking of wedding banquets, things like that. I have a lot of rejoice to go around. Did everything go, go according to plan? No. Of course not. It rained. That was a bummer. We wanted to be outside. We had it all planned perfectly. We had to come inside. Was God at work through that? Yeah. I, the poor folks that had their tables in the narthex got stranded a little bit, but everybody was visited. We had guests come. Uh, it made setup easier. It made some things go a little more smoothly than if it had been outside. God was at work in it. Uh, because of the rain, we had no bounce house. We had the games outside got canceled. Didn't have as many kids here as we had hoped for, but the ones that came, they got their faces painted. They got uh, a chance to color. They got a chance to pick up candy and pens and stuff off everybody's tables. Uh, they had a chance to listen to the high school orchestras that were here. And uh, there were smiles. Is it how we planned it? No, but it was good. Um, the band, the windbags, were supposed to be here from one to three. They had a family medical emergency for one of the band members. We hold them in prayer. They had to cancel. Teresa stepped up. She was ready to run music bingo. We didn't end up needing it. But is that how we wanted it to go? No, but it was okay. God was still served and God still worked through us. God was at work in everything. And there's so much more to rejoice over than whatever little negatives there might have been. The organizations, all of you who volunteered in some way, a fire truck showed up. We didn't think they'd come in the rain. They still pulled a fire truck up for people to go look at. Uh, the orchestras that were here had a chance to share their gifts with the community. And uh, then they came down the hall and, and got to see ways that they could serve their community. Um, the Holy Spirit was at work. You could feel the buzz of, of what we wanted Community Fest to do, making connections and building community. That was happening. So we don't have to ask, was it successful? Or how did it go? Because then we'll get caught up in good versus bad. Instead, we can ask, well, what did we learn? And where did we see God? And I saw God all throughout it yesterday. In the end, God is at work in everything, in all circumstances. And we, if we can take that page out of Philippians, are steeped in the perspective of rejoice. And again, I will say rejoice in all circumstances. There was so much to rejoice from yesterday. And now that brings me to robes, or lack of them. If you go through the parable from Matthew, it's this whole thing, kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet. Okay? Did everything go according to plan? No. They had the the ox and the fatted calves slaughtered and ready. The banquet was spread out. All they needed were the guests to arrive. So the king said, hey, it's ready. Send out the messengers. Send out the slaves. Get the invitees. They didn't come. They blew it off. Why? I know, it just goes with the story. But why would they do that? He sends out more slaves. And they're like, no, nope. one goes to the farm. One goes to the business. And then for some reason, the rest of the guests who didn't want to come mistreat and kill the slaves. Beat them up. What the heck? Why would you do that? This, this fits in with last week's parables and the week before. This is still a conversation with the chief priests, right? That God was trying to give them something that they rejected, that they didn't recognize, that they turned away from. So the king is enraged. He sends his troops, destroys those murderers, burns their city. That's especially hard to read, especially with the war going on right now, wars going on right now. I can say, well, it's just part of the story. Jesus exaggerates, the hy does hyperbole to make his point. It's still unsettling. And then they say, okay, well, fine. They didn't come. 
go into the main streets and invite everybody you can get, good and bad, bring them all. And they do. That seems like a happy ending. Everybody gets to come and enjoy this. The ones who rejected the invitation didn't. Everybody else comes. And I wish the parable end there. But then there's that last part, and I always struggle with this. When the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wearing a wedding robe. He says, friend, how did you get out in here without a wedding robe? The man is speechless. And then the king says to the attendants, bind him hand and foot, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The gospel of the Lord? <laughs> Whatever happened at our wedding, we weren't tying up our guests. And there was one I would have liked to, but we weren't tying up our guests <laughs> and throwing them out in the muddy ground. I, I see what Jesus was doing, especially when you read this together with the last two weeks. He's really trying to drive it home to the chief priests, the elders, the scribes, the ones who didn't want to let go of their power and authority, that he is the real deal. And they're going to be out unless they can open their eyes and see it, accept it, and let go. But still, there was that, that guy in the robe. What, what's up with that? A while back, I, I read something, kind of a, a cultural commentary that, that helped me understand it. The custom of the day was when you were invited to a wedding, the host, the king in this case, provided you with robes. You weren't expected to bring one from home. They, they gave it to you. That was part of the hospitality. So this guy came off the streets to the wedding, complete grace, was handed a robe, in theory, and then chose not to wear it. And that's the part that I felt maybe was missing that would have helped me understand it better. If, if that is how it went, if he was given this robe and said, nah, no thanks, I'm just going to sit here without it, then he's rejecting the host's hospitality. He's refusing to receive what has been offered to him. The chief priests were refusing what God was offering them and Jesus. Jesus was telling them about the kingdom of heaven, what it would be like, and they were rejecting that. So it's not that the random wedding guest was getting picked on or anything like that. He was rejecting what was provided to him. Through baptism, we are marked, clothed in Christ forever, in all circumstances. All throughout the New Testament, you have variations on that. You have been clothed with Christ. You have put on Christ. You are in Christ. Christ is in you. It's, it's your garment now. It's your robe. It's how you show that you're accepting what you've been given. We pray for God's kingdom to come in and through us, heaven on earth, even a little bit in the here and now. The feast, the wedding feast, is already all around us. It's not something we wait for in heaven. Christ is our robe. New life in Christ, a Christ-like life. That is our robe. That is what we should be showing the world. That is what we should be wearing as we celebrate the feast, as we rejoice in all circumstances. A new life in Christ, a Christ-like life. That is our robe. Accepting the new life, actually living into it. Remember the whole producing fruits from the last couple of weeks, kingdom fruit. Looking for what God is up to, rejoicing always. That is the robe. That's our celebration garment that we're wearing in here and out there. That's what we want the world to see, is that we're at the feast, everybody. You can be at the feast. We'll invite you in off the streets. How are we showing that to people? It's not really about the robe that the guest wasn't wearing. It was about the rejection. Whenever we get caught up, like the chief priests, in nothing but negatives, and tearing down to build up, and holding on to power instead of emptying ourselves, whenever we act like they were acting, we are rejecting the robe that we have been given. The new life in Christ. It's there forever, sealed in baptism, but we're rejecting it whenever we aren't putting it on display. This new life in Christ, this baptismal celebration garment. Now, I am not wearing a robe today. Okay, That was intentional. 
The function of my robe that I wear on Sundays, it's called an alb, A-L-B, is symbolic. It, it symbolizes that kind of baptism, like the white that people traditionally wear at a baptism. Uh, it symbolizes that I'm a steward, right? It's a uniform. I'm here to serve on God's behalf. Um, it's part of a ritual. But it doesn't, just because I have a fancy robe, that doesn't make me more holy or anything like that. I chose not to wear a robe today to help make the point that it's not about that kind of robe, okay? It's not about being uh, holier than thou. It's not about being uh, superior in some way. It's not about being pious or whatever like that. It's not about the robe like that. It's about your celebration garment of wearing Christ or rejecting it. It's not about... In this case, you know, what you're wearing, it's about how you're living. It's about your hearts, not your wardrobe, not your outward appearance. So that is why I didn't wear a robe today, to try to, like, just jar you a little bit. I wanted to see how you would react, sure. But also just to be, that's not what it's about. What it's about is that you're a volunteer. You've been given grace, and now you're going to voluntarily share love in return. You're going to invite others in. We're going to host a crazy event like this and not knowing how it's going to go or who's going to show up and see what the Holy Spirit does with it. The point is, you're not expected to robe up like that and be an extra holy, or pious, holier than thou, superior. You are supposed to be robed up in Christ, and we know how Christ operates. Wear Christ. Live in Christ-like ways. Martin Luther said we should be little Christs. It's about having a total perspective of rejoicing at all times, in all circumstances. It's about living in godly ways like it was described in Isaiah. Uh, your Christ-like robe identifies you as a refuge and a shelter to those who need it to those who otherwise wouldn't be invited to anything. They see you with that wedding feast celebration garment, and they're like, I can come to the feast too. I'm like, hey, this isn't my robe, this is God's robe. God gave this to me. Come on in. Your Christ-like robes identify you as a volunteer on behalf of Christ, making connections and building community. If you look at Isaiah, your Christ-like robe identifies you as a feast maker, as a tear wiper, as a disgrace remover. That's your robe. The feast is all around us. It's ongoing. The kingdom of heaven is near. The Lord is near, Paul says. In your Christ-like robe, you embody the nearness. You're the advertisement. So wear your robe. Rejoice always. The peace of Christ, which surpasses understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and see, and the God of peace will be with you in all circumstances. Amen. Our hymn of the day. 523. Let us go now to the banquet. Uh, I, Debbie, I, I see that there's a repeat at the end of the refrain. Let's not repeat it every time. So we'll do the refrain once to verse, refrain once to verse. I invite you to stand.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. For the church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, that all followers of Christ share the mind of Christ and strive to live together in peace, staying firm in the Lord. God of grace. For green pastures and still waters and all the beauty of the natural world that creation flourishes and humankind lives in right relationship with all you have made, God of grace. For the nations of the world and all who hold positions of authority, that they govern in accordance with God's vision of justice, providing shelter and refuge to all in need, striving toward the goal of peace and prosperity for all, God of grace. For all experiencing valleys of illness and grief, that they be healed and comforted and find rest in the presence of the Good Shepherd who walks beside them. We pray especially for each other. Debbie, Johnny, Adam, Bonnie, Jackie, Angel, Ted, Stephen, Sue, Sharon, Karen, Hayden, Patrick, Ruth, Ken. We pray for our extended family and neighbors family and friends of Carl, Robin, Chuck, Dwayne, Margaret, Madeline, Griffin, Bob, Adam, Michelle and Tevin, Pam and Tony, friends and family of Joan, Connie, John, Janet, Sandy, Crystal, Bonnie, Tim, Addison, Mary, Debbie, Clay, our veterans, their fellow soldiers, and their waiting families, all law enforcement, firefighters, and first responders, the people and pastor, Reverend Catherine of All Souls Episcopal and our shared ministry, all those impacted by acts of violence at home and abroad, all who travel. God of grace. For this community of believers, that wherever there's conflict or discord, the love of Christ may keep us united and make us mindful of all that is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and excellent. Merciful God. In thanksgiving for the beloved saints who now rest in your mercy, that their faithful witness guides your church until the day we join them at your heavenly feast. God of grace. Heavenly Father of all families, thank you for the gift of family. Bless all those we call family, whether by blood or love. Strengthen their faith. Let them live in peace and joy. Protect them spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally, and in all ways that matter. This week, we especially pray for the Garbett, Gardner, and Giganti families, as well as our Messiah family. God of grace. For nations and people torn by war, we pray for peace. God of grace. Yes. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share that peace with one another. Bye.
once during the future. Yeah. Gotta get her away from the ow! That's alright. I just too slow. That was what I'm sorry.
Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We are on page 172, by the way. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, <coughs> gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Remembering, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. 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 Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. 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 Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I invite our communion assistants forward.
body, the blood, and the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ that you have received strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, before you go, please, on your way out, see the wall in the narthex. We tried to get one or two pieces of information from each of, I think we had 22 different organizations here at Community Fest. There's so much on that wall to learn about. If you couldn't be there or make it to the tables, opportunities coming up. In our brochure rack, there's also uh, especially some things from the Department of Community Resources. And uh, there's also some leftover giveaways, some little charging cables and uh, basically these things that are like uh, medical bracelets for your house. You put something on your door and then a magnet on your fridge. If they see it on the door, they know to look for your medical information on the fridge. There's a lot of stuff out there. Please stop by and check it out. And if there's any parents here with the National Youth Gathering, just stay after and talk to me for a couple minutes when we're done. Our sending song is Send Forth by God's Blessing. It's number 547.